Let's take a look at the next question. So the leopard gecko lives in the desert. The two line graphs below show the relationship between the activity level and the temperature change uh, of the desert in a day. So the first thing you need to notice is this is the time. This is the timeline. And this is the temperature. So as the temperature goes up, the activity is actually the minimum. And then when the temperature goes down to the minimum, the activity becomes maximum. So let's look at the question. What can you infer about the leopard gecko based on the graph shown above? Let's look at the first one. Its activity increases as the temperature increases. Is that true? So activity increases as the temperature increases. But as we know from here, when the temperature is the lowest, the activity is actually the maximum. So this statement is false. So let's look at statement B. It is most active during the night when the temperature is cooler. So at night, when the temperature is cooler, it is most active. That is true. Its behavioral adaptation helps it to survive in the hot desert. So you might not have learned this word behavioral adaptation. You will learn it later in the chapter. But basically, it behaves in a way that helps it to survive in the hot desert. So is that true? If it's hot, uh, if the temperature is hot, it doesn't really move. If the temperature is cool, it moves a lot. So generally that's true because if it's hot, you also want to stay at home and rest, right? You don't want to go out. So this is true. It behaves in a way that helps it survive. Uh, it is structurally adapted to be active when the temperature is hot. So what this means is that structurally, structurally adapted means it is designed or built or it has certain uh, characteristics that help it to be active when the temperature is hot. But you know that it's not true because when the temperature is hot, it is not act when the temperature is hot, it is not active. So this is also false. So the answer is actually B and C, which is number two. And let's look at the next question. So Steve set up an experiment below. He observed the behavior of the fruit flies in the two setups at 10 minute intervals for one hour. The wire netting kept the fruit flies in while allowing air exchange. Now, even before you look at the question, I want to talk to you a bit about fruit flies. Now, the key thing is that fruit flies, they live for hours. They have very, very short lifespan. So within hours, some of them will die and some of them will, they, they will die and they will reproduce. So their lifespan is in terms of hours. So let's look at this experiment carefully. So first of all, you have netting over here, all right, netting. It's the same kind of netting, fruit flies, same number of fruit flies, same banana over here, ice water at one degree Celsius and tap water at 30 degrees Celsius. So the key difference in this or the key variation, uh, the number one variation in this experiment is the temperature. So this one is 30 degrees Celsius. This one is one degree Celsius. So let's take a look at the answers. What's, which of the following is the aim for Steve's experiment? To find out which type of food fruit, fruit flies prefer. Uh, that's wrong because both of them have bananas. So if let's say I want to design an experiment to find a, a number of food, it should look something like this. So I would have one jar here, two jars here. And this would be an apple, and this would be a banana, and there will be some fruit flies over here. Alternatively, you can also have one jar where there is a uh, wire mesh over here, and there is a apple here, and a banana here, a banana here, and there are some fruit flies, and you see which side uh, the fruit flies prefer. So this one will be to test whether the fruit flies prefer fruit A, which is a banana, or fruit B, which is an apple. So let's take a look at the second one to find out if fruit flies prefer cold to warm surroundings. So how would that experiment uh, find out? So likewise, you have a large container. There's some wire netting over here. And you have cold temperature here you have warm temperature over here, you have some fruit flies, and you see which place they belong. So if 
there are more fruit flies at the cold side than they, be, they prefer cold. There are more fruit flies at the warm side than they prefer warm. Alright, th this one is to find out how temperature of the surrounding affects the activity level of the fruit flies. So you have one jar and one jar. Again, so this jar is at 1 degree Celsius. This jar is at 30 degrees Celsius. And there are some fruit flies here. And if you're looking at the activity level, right, that means you want to see how many fruit flies are flying versus how many fruit flies are resting or not moving. All right. So if there are many fruit flies flying here and one degree, most of them are like lying on the floor, whereas at 30 degrees, most of them are flying in the air then you know that uh, activity level for 1 degree is lower than 30 degrees Celsius. So last one, to find out which is the best temperature for the fruit flies to survive. So if you find that uh, after a few hours that most of the fruit flies are like lying on the floor and they are all uh, dead, whereas the other one has a lot of fruit flies still flying around, then you know that uh, this one has better chance of survival, they can survive longer as compared to this one. So the answer for this is actually number 3.